everyone, I'm Keisha Charmaine and I'm back. And before I jump into the topic of this video, I want to shout out my sponsor. Thank you so much, RiaSafari.com, for sponsoring this video. They create very luxurious bonnets. And what sets these bonnets apart from other bonnets is that due to the material and the way it's made, it doesn't allow oil to permeate through the bonnet and onto your sheets or your pillowcases or or whatever you may be leaning against and that is a great plus because when oil does permeate through it stains so shout outs to risesafari.com i have a link below and i also have a coupon code for you you can get 15 percent off with my coupon code keisha15 k-e-i-s-h-a-1-5 and get 15 percent off your bonnet if you're in the market looking for a luxurious bonnet with pretty patterns they have different patterns and colors so definitely check it out and see what you like the best okay and it's black owned black woman owned so i'm gonna be reading a dm that i received shout outs to gabrielle alu gabby and yoki on instagram i hope i'm saying that right but um I'm gonna get into the message. She asks, would you cut your locks completely off for a serious acting role, like an iconic black woman of some sort? I said, yes, I'd cut them off if the price could greatly benefit me and my family. You got a role for me? LOL. And then she says, LOL. Girl, no, I was gonna ask you if you had one for me. Nah, just been watching you since your early YouTube days and I thought I'd reach out and drop some love real quick. I started my locks November 2013 and recently cut off about 3 years worth of growth, which was about 7 to 11 inches all over. I want to be an actress and I often contemplate if I would cut them off for any reason once they are at your length. So I don't know, I may surprise myself. Anyways, much love queen. And then I said... I think it's important to not be attached to anything or anyone. I am not my hair, you know what I mean? Thanks for the love. Okay, and then she gave me permission to use the topic in the video and read her, her message and shout her out. Okay, so I really wanted to talk about this because I have a lot of thoughts on the topic of cutting your hair for a job opportunity. I, um, and a lot of the times people are really adamant about not cutting their locks off for for work you know accept me for who i am is what a lot of people say and i completely understand that and i completely agree with that um however some jobs are really really strict when it comes to hair and they have their rules there are more um laws coming into place that ban discrimination against um natural hairstyles so that's a plus However, jobs like being an actress or being an actor, I can understand that being more difficult for you to get opportunities, um, especially when your locks are long. Because when your locks are long, they are harder to conceal. It may be very limiting to the hairstyles you can have for the different roles you can play. And obviously, when you're an actor, you have to be a chameleon, you have to play different roles, and you have to, you know, play different people and they all look different so they have different hairstyles so that's difficult when you're an actor usually when someone pursues a career like acting you have a great passion for it well I, I don't know if I should say usually but a lot of the times you have a great passion for it a lot of the times when people lock their hair they have a great passion for it that's when you know you have to really sit with yourself and decide what's more important to you your hair or your career now to a lot of people it might seem like a really easy choice but to others not so much um, a lot of people tie their identity to their locks and I personally don't agree with that I know a lot of people say that you know my, my hair is my identity and I feel like so what if you lost your hair say you got some sort of hair follicle disease and you lost all your hair did you lose your identity no you didn't so I don't, I don't like when people say that their hair is their identity, but I think I know what they mean. I think that they mean that their hair is about, is like a symbol of their identity, but we can't confuse symbols 
for the real thing. Your hair is not your identity. This is my belief. Um, if you have any opposing beliefs, please leave it in the comment below. If your hair can hold you back from a great passion in your life like that, I think that you have an unhealthy attachment. And I think that in general, no matter what it is, if it's a, a thing, a person, a place, a habit, we have, when we have attachments to those things, typically they're unhealthy. I think the only attachment, I don't even, uh, I was gonna say, I think the only attachment that's healthy is to your child, but no, not even, because when they get older, and they're they're totally developed into their own person and then you still feel like you have control over them and you still you know want to have too much influence on them I think that is also an unhealthy attachment <sighs> so that being said if you want to pursue acting and that requires you to cut your hair like I said in in the email or in the DM yeah I would recommend doing it if the price was right if it will if it could greatly impact you and your family if you if it will greatly achieve your goals help you achieve your goals then then i absolutely especially with with um in, in the context of her situation she said that um she had her locks for several years and she was contemplating cutting them once they reach my length now with that being said I've had my locks for nine years and that's how they've gotten to this length. Nine and a, nine and a half, almost nine and a half, something like that, I forget. Over nine years I've had my locks and with that being said, I've gone through a lot in my hair journey and the beginning stages, the early stages where I was learning to accept my beauty for, um, in a different look than it typically looked with, with my hair relaxed and straight and long. I had to um, accept my beauty in a more natural way, my natural beauty. And I also had to accept myself as my hair was perpetually messy looking and and um, not as feminine looking as I'd like it to have looked. I had to I had to get over the the phases which you know came back and forth where I wished my hair was longer or I wished my hair was brighter when I was always coloring it or I just always wished something maybe I wished some of them were thicker so I combined some like I had so many different there were so many different phases to my growth throughout my hair journey and also not just in relation to my hair if you've read my book more than a hair journey you know what I'm talking about you, um, the sort of transformations you go through mentally through a hair journey often impact your self-love journey it helps you to learn what, what things really matter to you it helps you to learn what things are most important and you know everyone has their own unique revelations during their lock journeys I hope that after nine years of having locks you've grown in many many ways and that could simply mean that it's time for you to enter a new phase in your journey. Whether that means to cut significant inches off, whether that means to comb it out, whether that means to shave your head, or even if that means you just, you know, you keep growing your hair longer and you just don't pay attention to it as much. You just feel like, you know, your hair is hair, hair is hair. Either way, if you choose to cut your hair off for a roll, or if you choose to cut your roll, your hair off for a job, that doesn't mean that your journey is over. It may just mean that these locks, the journey of these locks is over. But you know, a life journey is never ending. Well, it kinda is, but you know what I'm trying to say. And acting is a really, is a really cool career to have, especially if you have locks. I believe that we need more representation of women and men with locks in Hollywood. And the only way we're going to do that is if we, you know, try to pursue those big roles with our locks. Um, a lot of times people will say, oh, but they, you know, they don't really write roles like that for, for people with locks. That may be so. However, you know. Look at what Issa Rae has been doing. Look at what Tyler Perry does. Look at 
look at all a lot of people are you know creating content we don't have to wait for someone to give us the content we can be the creators ourselves get one of your writer friends to write a role for you with your locks and shine in your glory or even if your role doesn't have locks i mean even if your character doesn't have locks i think it's still really cool when you do have locks maybe you have a wig on and you have your locks underneath but every time you are on the red carpet or every time you know people see you on social media they see you with your with your natural locks i think that's still impactful as well it's a difficult choice no matter what so i know i think i just gave points supporting both decisions and either way it's a personal choice it's really up to you but of course i naturally i'm still going to advocate for people with locks to pursue acting with their locks um without having to cut them off it may seem unrealistic oh boy can we talk about unrealistic for a minute let's pause okay okay i'm surprised if i never told you guys this before actually because I, I love to tell everybody the story and if you read my book then you may remember this little story but i'll try to make this short so in 10th grade 10th grade or 11th grade i was six about 16 years old and i had i took theater class i went to an art school i've always gone to art schools until um college but um i went to an art school and i took theater class and like the people who taught um all of the different art classes were working artists so they weren't teachers you know what i mean they were people who came to the school during whatever time they off they had so they can make an extra buck in between gigs or whatever so my theater teacher was a working actor he was about 10 years older than us so i'm 16 he's about 26 at the time something like that i, I, I can google it to double check but um so yeah we did a lot of improv in that class it was really fun but most of the people in the class just you know just wanted a, a fun class to add to their schedules most of them didn't actually want to pursue acting myself included although i kind of did there was a big a little bug inside of me that did want to pursue acting i definitely wanted to pursue modeling but i've always wanted to pursue modeling um and at the time i think that i was pursuing modeling i think that i was but um if you know some other times modeling and acting go hand in hand but i wasn't really focused on trying to be an actress I'll, because i didn't really think that it was I don't know I don't know if it was my confidence if I just didn't have the confidence or if I really didn't want to but I think that it's probably a little bit of both but definitely a lot of bit of I didn't feel confident enough to pursue that at that point in my life at 16 and I remember um, there was a my teacher he told us all to write little little scenes and you know he would choose whichever scene we would perform at the showcase at the end of the semester and my my um scene was one of the scenes that were chosen and my scene w was with me and a guy in my class and as we would practice my teacher would always tell me like he should like you're really natural like you're so good at this like you should really pursue it and i told him i said i don't want to pursue acting that's unrealistic it's unrealistic i'd rather choose a more realistic career and he just simply said, I understand. Mind you, I'm telling a working actor, who's my teacher, that becoming an actor is unrealistic. Like, how dare I? I mean, obviously, I was a kid. I, didn't, I, I wasn't really thinking about how offensive that could have been. That's just how I see it in retrospect. But yeah, that was a working actor. That's kind of insulting. Like... He was from Georgia and he moved to, to New York City to pursue acting out here. And I know that he was actually getting little jobs here and there. I do remember sometimes he would be absent um, because he was working. So anyway, let's fast forward maybe like four or five years later. And I remember I was in my I was with my partner at the time. We were in his house watching TV and um it was a commercial that came on for a movie and I was, and then I was like I was like babe like that looks like my theater teacher and he's like a word and I'm like yeah that looks like him that looks just like him that's crazy 
And then to myself, I'm thinking, what was his name? What was his name? And be because he was so young, mind you, we were 16, he was about 26, he didn't have us calling him Mr. Whatever. He had us calling him by his nickname, Chad. So I was trying to remember, I was like, what, what was his name? I think it was Chad, it was Chad. And I'm like, let me look to see the credits pop up and see who this guy is, because he looks just like my teacher. This movie, 42, biopic of Jackie Robinson, starring Chadwick Boseman. I was like, Chadwick Boseman? Chad! That's Chad! Oh my god! I, I was going crazy. Like, I was so hyped. I'm like, oh my god, that's my teacher! He's playing Jackie Robinson! <laughs> oh my god, yes. And like, that really like, rocks my world a little bit. When I saw him in that. And then like, um... I did, I did watch the movie. I, I thought the movie was pretty good. Um, then I saw Get On Up. I thought Get On Up was amazing when he played um, James Brown. I love that movie. What else did I see him in? I saw him in Marshall when he played Thurgood Marshall. He did really good in that. Especially considering he didn't look nothing like Thurgood Marshall. And, and of course, um, Black Panther. Um, the movie was good. It was, it was culturally iconic and needed. I personally am not a superhero kind of kind of girl so like I'm not like I was never I wasn't into the hype like everybody else was everyone's repping Wakanda whatever I I'll always be team Zamunda but that's fine so yes that was just really inspired me and like just just to see where he came from like you know he risked it all I mean I don't know his his life like that but for him to move from Georgia to New York as a young man like I feel like that was really brave and you have to believe in yourself you have to really have that um burning desire to achieve your goals and yeah obviously he didn't have locks he didn't, um but um my point in bringing up that story what was it i had a point somewhere oh yeah unrealistic it may not be it may not seem too realistic for a woman with locks to become a supermodel it may not become it may not seem really realistic for a woman with locks to to be a, a big superstar in hollywood that doesn't mean that you shouldn't believe in yourself and pursue your desires because honestly if you fail big whoop i think that it hurts way more when you don't even try just saying Thanks for watching. Love, light, and locks.